what is it that makes Baldwin Park different that, that led to Baldwin Park getting this number one rating on education trust? And then segueing that into the future, how, how do you maintain that and build upon that momentum? I, I think part of the reason why uh, Baldwin Park Unified School District is a little different uh, from the districts surrounding us has a lot to do with the leadership that we have. Um, and it comes by the way of our superintendent, Mark Scavarna, um, who has a different background than a lot of other superintendents around our, our uh, well, within the county actually. Um, Mark comes from a, an Air Force background, business background, and came into the Baldwin Park really looking at it through a different lens. Um, he is definitely an out-of-the-box thinker, um, which works for what's coming along in terms of leadership um, and, and in terms of what's happening with our students. Um, he is a very creative thinker, um, and he doesn't go by the, by the book in so many words. Uh, so that in itself has helped us to really go beyond what we would traditionally think of as we look at school districts and the educational process. He is into products uh, and making sure that there is a purpose of what we're doing here at Baldwin Park Unified School District. Um, and I think we really ventured off into thinking about all of this uh, about three years ago. Mind you, Mark has been with the district for, for quite a long time has been a superintendent for 12 to 13 years but that really came together when we started working uh, with the community about three years ago and talked about the strategic plan we had approximately 123 some parents staff um, and had sort of a I would say a town hall type of meeting and talked about what was really truly important to this community in terms of what we wanted our students to, to do and to be able to do as they got into the real world. So that was the start of really looking at where we wanted to go to in 2025, as we call it, our, our strategic flight plan. And that has given us the, the roadmap um, to move forward in this district. So we, we are looking at what is really important for our students to be highly competitive um, and highly competitive in the world, not only within Baldwin Park, not only within the, the county and not only within California, but we're looking at really to be competitive worldwide. Uh, so we want to make sure that they have the, the skills and knowledges that they need to, to succeed. As, as the number two person in the district, in the, in the district leadership, can you talk about how the cabinet level and then how that's expanded down to the principal level? I think it's um, a lot of the, in terms of how I've built and helped to build the cabinet really in terms of leadership and, and modeling, I, I, I really take it way back when, when, when I first started as a leader. It's a, it's a leadership through respect um, and really valuing people's individual strengths and really maximizing those strengths to help our students. Um, I've never been uh, one of those leaders that say, okay, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, and being very restrictive about what folks were doing but really being open to different ideas uh, and supporting the leaders to do what they need to do as leaders, to lead other staff, um, and being really open to their creative ideas and sort of growing them um, to their full potential. Um, and that's just my philosophy in terms of leadership. And I, I would think that Mark has the same philosophy. He's very open, very flexible um, regarding leadership. So a part of it is, is, is making sure that we have the right folks on the, in the right seats on the bus, <laughs> uh, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and using those individu individual strengths uh, to ensure that folks are placed 
in, are placed in the right position. I think that's very important. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to put a person in a, in a position that they're not gonna grow in um, or rise to their full potential. So it's really about getting folks in the right places and then supporting them accordingly to ensure that they succeed. Um, so that's, I, I suppose that's the, the philosophy of leadership that we have here at Bowling Park Unified. Um, and of course, we are looking at the principles in the same way. Uh, we want to make sure that folks are placed properly um, in their positions uh, so that they can succeed. Uh, there, there is, the worst thing that you can do is just have someone in a position where they won't succeed. You want to make sure that folks are in positions where they can succeed, and I think that's where our philosophy stands in terms of making sure that we build our, our leaders and also providing support. Um, in the other interviews, we've, we've talked about the elementary, secondary, uh, touched on uh, adult school. I know you have background in ECE. Could you talk about how ECE supports <laughs> uh, well, growing up? Absolutely, um, and, and that's one of my passions is early childhood education. It always starts at the very beginning. Um, early childhood education, there are tons of studies, um, and I, I could probably rattle them off, uh, but it, there are just a lot of studies that indicate that early childhood education does make a difference. Uh, when you've got even three or four year olds getting the base knowledge um, and socialization skills. A big piece of what we do in school are those soft skills. And as we talk about 21st century, those are the things that help students succeed. And a lot of what we do in early childhood education is working on those soft skills, uh, the skills that will help students succeed, uh, being flexible, being adaptable. Um, and we felt as if here at Baldwin Park Unified School District, we needed that. And so um, we started off way back when, in, when I got here in about 2000, kind of assessed what it was like in terms of early childhood education. We had spatterings of early childhood education at different sites. But then we had an opportunity and took the opportunity to really expand early childhood education at all the elementary school sites. So we have several programs that meet the different needs of the community. Uh, we have Head Start, Early Head Start, State Preschool, Los Angeles Universal Preschool, and wanted to make sure that that was consistent across the board so that each and every student coming in at three and four, or even parents with babies, had the opportunity to, to participate in those programs. Um, you get your foundational skills in early child education. And a lot of what we do in early child education is, again, socialization aspect is, is wonderful and working on the soft skills. But um, there is sometimes a misconception that all we do is socialization. A lot of academics in early child education. Uh, Pre-reading skills, pre-writing skills, uh, math skills. It's amazing when, when you think about some of the things that you do in ECE, it looks like play, but that's exactly what we want. We want children to learn through play. And as we start talking about the Common Core State Standards, we're coming back to that. And we're using even some of the techniques that we're using in early child, childhood education for 21st century type learning. You know, looking at hands-on experiences, very important and um, critical thinking skills, having students really problem solve for themselves versus just telling them what the answer is. So early childhood education plays a, a big part in what we do here at Bowling Park Unified School District. It's, it's the foundation uh, of learning that really sets the course for future successes in, in education. Right. So if I kind of get you going on that, can you talk to it? Sure. I'll try. Okay. Okay. So 
uh, Foyland, I looked at the strategic plan, and uh, one of the things that really struck me was there's a there's a, a goal around a safe and secure environment of mutual respect, uh, and there was a, of course the academic section, uh, but there was another one on soft skills about those uh, what you call those 21st century skills um, that deal with how how young people can deal with each other and collaboration as an example. Uh, can you talk about what what led the district to to have these two goals? Very different. Right. And, and again, a, as I had indicated earlier, when the community got together, and this was homegrown. It, it wasn't something that we were getting out of a book, although a lot of books do talk about the importance of um, other things aside from the academics. Um, academic portion is very important, and that's something that's always been a staple of education, obviously. But when we start to take a look at what's truly important in terms of helping students succeed, again, it's, all, it's in all the books, but this came, what was so fascinating about this was that it came from the community. And they were talking about soft skills and what was important. Oftentimes we talk about the IQ, the intelligence quotient, but rarely do we talk about the EQ, sort of the emotional uh, quotient where truthfully it, it's how people communicate with each other and how we are able to be able to be flexible, adaptable, uh, those soft skills that are truly required. Uh, when you get into the real world, sometimes it's not how much you know, it's how you're able to communicate with folks. Um, oftentimes what we hear is you, you have professors who are brilliant truly brilliant, but if they can't communicate to their students and if they can't get along, build those relationships with students, do they truly learn? Um, and so what we're trying to instill in our students is the same type of thing. Uh, we want them to be able to be adaptable, be flexible, having those soft skills that's really going to be required in the workplace. Um, when we interviewed a lot of the, the businesses uh, regarding our strategic plan, the thing that came up all the time was not about how much they knew, but their ability to get along with others, um, being able to be adaptable, problem solve, be able to critically think. So those things um, are in our strategic plan. We, we truly believe that's truly required of our, our, our graduates, and, and I think that those particu particular things would truly help them in the future. Uh, when we interviewed the superintendent, he, he talked a, a great deal about having high expectations and a belief in the students. And when I looked at the data from your strategic plan, uh, the students were asked, is there a caring adult? Uh, did they feel respected? That the Scores came back amazingly high. I was shocked, I have to tell you, <laughs> uh, especially at the high school That's level. a good thing. Yes, uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, we, we were talking 70 to 80 percent of the students felt connected to a teacher, that someone cared, that the teachers had high expectations. Um, that wasn't the description the superintendent gave us when we first got here. H how, how did this transition take place? I, I think a lot of it has to do with modeling from the top. Um, and uh, things don't just occur unless you see others modeling it. Um, aside from learning theory and motivation, it says that relationships are probably one of the most important things in motivating students to, to, to perform and to, to learn. But again, it, it's always been the thought from the top um, that we should have caring relationships, uh, a, a level of respect for everyone, uh, not just for other staff members, but for students and families. Um, I think it's, I, I, it's, I suppose I got here in about 2000. It, it's always sort of been the thought, um, at least in my opinion, <laughs> that, um, that we should have good relationships with, with our students. Um, I couldn't really tell you how it 
came about? Was it methodical? Was it something that, that was said? Um, I think we were just basically getting it from what we were getting from the top, and, and that was sort of what was expected, making sure that we were respectful of everyone, including our students. Anything else you want to add that I haven't asked? It's a great place to work. Um, I, I think we've got some wonderful students. We've got some wonderful community members who are very supportive of the educational process. Um, and we've got some wonderful staff. Uh, I think we've got some hardworking staff who are dedicated to, to the art of teaching, um, but also dedicated in general to, to this community. So we, I, I'm, I feel very fortunate to be working here. Um, and I think we are headed in the right direction. Uh, onward to 2025. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go for some sound bites now. Okay. So it's kind of putting you on the spot, right? But you've been here for a while, and, and you're a leader, and you have a vision. You're not the superintendent, but, you know, he's empowered everybody to have a vision. You're not just following orders, right? You're, I'm assuming you guys are all enacting things, right? Trying to bring your strengths into the situation, right? Right. So um, if, if, if we were here when you first started and, you know, we're somewhere here, what is it? Do you have an outside edge, like tw you know, twenty twenty five? Like, what's the vision that you see based on all how it's been going all these years, and and the, the leadership team and everything? What's what's the potential actualized for Baldwin Park in your mind? Well, for me, I think when you say actualized, I I would have to take a look at students uh, and, and seeing where they're headed. I think the next step is to really find out where students are going. Um, and ultimately getting in touch with them in the future and saying, what did we do right? You know, you're in a successful position at this point in time. Um, it's doing an assessment of what we've done thus far um, and what we've done in the past to make them successful. Uh, because ultimately, they are our products. <laughs> Students are our products. And if they're not doing well, then we've got to change something. But if they are doing well, we'd also like to sort of um, continue that and really build on it and do even better. And then um, is there one thing about, about the district, one thing you've done or a, a methodology or a belief that, that the district has that's really been responsible for this West Ed uh, thing where you guys have closed the achievement gap better than the other school districts? I, I suppose I could name off a bunch of programs. Uh, it, it's, it's not any one thing. I wish I could say there was a silver bullet to, to everything. That, that's just not the case. I think what we have is a, um, a multitude of things and a multitude of people who really care about the process and, and making sure that we are helping students uh, and making sure that we're helping them along the way. Uh, again, we have some wonderful programs. I can name them off again, starting from early childhood education, which builds a foundation of learning. But on that, you, you do have other programs, like the dual language program. We have our wonderful EL uh, department. Uh, we've got some wonderful teachers. We've got after school programs and such. So it's not any one thing. It, it, it's a multitude of things working together cohesively to help our students. Okay, because other every school district in the in California is doing multiple things, but you said working together. You, would you say that way? If there's one thing, what, could you sort of talk about that a little bit? I, I as um, well, working together as a team um, truly helps. Um, it, we could be working in isolation and different little departments here, and really not even communicate with the the person next door. But that's just not the case. Uh, what we want to do is to be able to work together so that we're providing the best possible program for our students. Um, and you can only do that if you work together cohesively as a team and communicate with e each other, collaborate. Um, not to say that folks elsewhere don't do that, but maybe we do it just a little bit better. <laughs> I don't know, and I, I don't want to brag or, or, or anything, but I, I think we have a pretty good darn team um, working together 
for our students. So last thing, so um, yeah, all the administrators, y'all seem, you know, a lot of work, you know, you cut the, the administration budget, but you look bright eyed and bushy tailed and here it is, you know, you walk <laughs> in and, and, and so um, what, what's that fire? What, what keeps everybody at the district level so inspired? I, I think it's the goal in mind. Um, when, when you think about what's truly important, if you keep the focus on the, s the success of students, then that will keep you motivated. Um, it, we got into this business for a reason, and it's the reason to help students succeed. And I think sometimes that thought and that focus gets lost in, in the jungle of bureaucracy sometimes. And we don't like a whole lot of bureaucracy here. Uh, we like to get to the point and make sure that we're doing what we need to do for students. Um, it's just uh, kind of the mindset that we have um, and, and making sure that we have products uh, for students and, and programs for students so they can kind of attach themselves to it um, and really get through not only through graduation, but through college or some other post-secondary option of their choice. That's a great sound, Bob.